Hello everyone, this is Wes James here, and I'm back to bring you some more awesome Final Cut Pro effects. As I said in my last tutorial, I was competing in a 24 hour film race. I completed it last week, and now I'm back to business. In today's tutorial, we're going to create a simple extreme sports intro using plugins from Alex4D, CoreMelt, and elements from Photoshop. Here's what the final result looks like. Before we get started, I would recommend downloading a trial version of the Cormel Complete set. With it, you receive a 15 day unwatermarked trial of about 200 plugins. Also included in the set are 33 free plugins you can have forever. If you remember from my last tutorial, you can also download free transitions from Alex4D. Let's get started. First, let's create our background. In the example you saw, I used stock footage clips from various sites, but this will work with still images that are about the same size as well. Let's get clips or images of the following, surfing, biking, skateboarding, and kayaking. Once you got your clips or stills, place them in the order I read previously in the timeline with a duration of about 3 seconds. Select all four clips or stills and hit the keyboard shortcut Option C to nest items, and then name the sequence Extreme Sports Video Wall. This next step will only work if you've downloaded and installed the Cormel Complete Package. Go to your effects browser, Video Filters, C2 Shatter, and select Panel Vision and apply it to your nested sequence. Option double click to bring it into the viewer. Go to your Filters tab. Let's change a few parameters. Fill Ratio to 1. Number Horizontal and Vertical to 4. Enable the Use Mask options. And select Soften Edges. Change the Mask Scale from 1 to 1.06. Go to your effects browser, video filters, C2 shatter, and select wrap around and apply it to your next sequence. Here are my settings. The stretch was 1, the height was 3.5, and the diameter was 2.8. You'll have to play around with the settings if you have a unique sequence, but overall, try to make sure it fills the entire screen and doesn't look too distorted. Let's keyframe the X shift parameter so that it'll rotate over time. Set a keyframe at the end point with a value of 0. Move to the out point by hitting the keyboard shortcut Shift O and set a keyframe for 720. Now the video wall will rotate over the course of its duration two revolutions. Let's move on to our silhouettes and text. I have provided some chrome silhouettes of each of the extreme sports that will be highlighted as well as chrome text that you can download at the bottom of the video. I found these on DeviantArt.com and then applied special layer styles in Photoshop to give them a shiny chrome finish. Import the silhouettes and text into your project browser and place them in a bin. Select the Extreme Titles PSD in your project browser. Hit the keyboard shortcut Option D four times to create four duplicates. Go into the first copy and select the kayaking text and hit the keyboard shortcut Control S to solo and hit Control W to close the sequence. Go into your second copy and select the biking text and hit the keyboard shortcut Control S to solo it and then hit Control W to close the sequence. Go into your third copy and select the skateboarding text and hit the keyboard shortcut Control S to solo it and then hit Control W to close the sequence. And finally, go into your fourth copy 
and select the surfing text and hit the keyboard shortcut Control S to solo that and then hit Control W to close the sequence. Once you've gone into each duplicate sequence, rename them accordingly so you don't get confused which is which. Next, bring the surfer silhouette into the viewer. Give it a duration of about 3 seconds, and place it on track 2 at the very beginning. Adjust the scale and position so that there is enough space within title safe and there is space beneath it to place the chrome surfing text. Change the track panel from V1 to V2. Bring the surfing text sequence into the viewer. Superimpose the surfing text into the timeline by pressing the keyboard shortcut F12. Adjust the scale and position so that it is beneath the silhouette and within title save. Select the silhouette and the text and hit the keyboard shortcut Option C to nest items. Name it Surfer Silhouette and Text and then hit OK. I'm going to repeat these steps for the other silhouettes, so I'll be back in just a few. And we're back, and this is what we should have so far. If you have to, double click the nested sequences and make changes to the silhouette and text by adjusting the scale and position where needed. Once you've manipulated the silhouettes and text and placed them in their nested sequences, let's reposition their place in the timeline. Select the biking silhouette and the kayaking silhouette sequences and hit the keyboard shortcut Option Up Arrow to move them a track above. Hit the keyboard shortcut Shift Command A to deselect all. Option double click the surfer nested sequence to bring it to the viewer. Go to your motion tab, move the playhead 15 frames by typing in plus 15, and set a keyframe for the scale with a value of 100%. Hit the keyboard shortcut shift O to move to the out point, and set a keyframe for the scale with a value of 85%. If we look through here, we have a slow zoom back animation with our surfer silhouette and its text. Right click the surfer silhouette nested sequence and select copy. Select the three remaining sequences and hit the keyboard shortcut option V to paste attributes. Select basic motion and then hit OK. Now all the sequences have the same motion which is what we want. Go to your effects browser, video transitions, 3D simulation, cross zoom plus curve and double click it to open the transition editor. Change its duration from 1 second to 15 frames. Grab the hand tool in the right hand corner and drag it to the endpoints of all the nested sequences. Now, we'll have a quick zoom in animation on top of our slow zoom back animation. Let's create our title reveal next. Inside the zip file link below, I also included a PSD file titled Extreme Sports Logo. Make sure you bring that in as well when you import the toolkit elements. Bring the PSD title into the timeline. Select it and hold down Option and Shift and drag up to create a duplicate. Hit the keyboard shortcut Option Up Arrow to move it one track above. Put the video track panel back to where the first extreme title is and hit the keyboard shortcut F12 to superimpose the highlight generator. Shorten or increase the duration of the three elements to five seconds. Double, 
Double click the highlight generator to bring it into the viewer. Go to the controls tab and change the following parameters. Highlight width to from 10 to 0.25 and highlight soft from 10 to 1. Change the center on the Y position from 0 to negative 90. Move the playhead 18 frames and set a keyframe with that current value. Move the playhead about 29 frames and change the value from negative 90 to 85. Right click on the highlight generator and change its composite mode from normal to travel mat alpha. Right click on the duplicate Extreme Sports logo and change its composite mode from normal to add. Go back into the highlight generator controls, click on the eyedropper for the highlight color, and click on a gray piece of the Extreme Sports logo. Enable Dither and Gaussian if you want. Select the logos in the highlight generator and hit the keyboard shortcut Option C to nest items. Rename it Main Logo. Select the main logo nested sequence and hit the keyboard shortcut Option Up Arrow to move it one track above. Go to your Generators tab in the Viewer. Select C2 Image Flow Instant Montages and scroll down to Layers to Camera. Change its duration from 10 seconds to 5 seconds and hit the keyboard shortcut F10 to overwrite. Double click to bring it into the viewer. Go to the controls tab. Let's change a few parameters. Change the from to image wells. Change the seconds per image from 5 to 0.75. The scaling as is from 0.5 to 0.3. Twirl down the camera parameter. Change all the rotation values from what they are currently to zero. On the X position, change it from negative 0.5 to negative 0.21. On the Y position, leave it at 0.5. And on the Z position, change it from zero to 2.15. Scroll down, twirl on the depth blur parameter, and change the max blur from 5 to 15. Twirl on the randomize parameter, increase the seed from its current value to 5, and enable randomize on X, Y, and Z. Scroll up. For the image wells, drag the silhouettes from the browser into any of the wells. Reposition the core melt generator so that it is on track 5. Reposition the main logo sequence so that it is on track 6. The last thing we're going to do is bring in a stock motion graphics background from movietools.info. Go to your project browser, double click to bring the graph motion graphics background into your viewer, place it on track 4 with a duration of about 5 seconds. Change the color of the background using an image control or a color correction filter if you want. Go to your effects browser, scroll up to video transitions and twirl down the folder, go to dissolve, and double click dip to color dissolve. Change the color from black to white. Change the duration from 1 second to 12 frames. Change the threshold from 50 to 0 and the soft from 100 to 80. Using the hand tool in the right hand corner, drag it to the endpoints of the main logo layers to camera, and the stock motion graphic background image. Next, let's select the main logo sequence, the core melt generator, and the stock motion graphics background with their transitions. Type in minus 12 to move them 12 frames back. 
No transitions will occur the last 12 frames of the kayaking sequence. Let's render this and see how it turned out. And we're back. After the render, I added some music and sound effects to spice it up a bit. As always, feel free to add your own sound to make it your own. I set an in point at the beginning and an out point at the end of the music track. Press shift forward slash to play from in to out and see what we have. And there you go, a nice simple extreme sports intro right inside of Final Cut Pro. With this setup, you can take it a step further and add other elements to make it your own. The purpose of this tutorial was to show you some of the possibilities of the Cornwall Complete Package. These are incredible plugins that were created with a creative individual in mind. Try them out if you get a chance. Hopefully, future tutorials will feature Cornwall plugins combined with other plugins, so stay tuned. Also, I would like to thank the viewers who watched my Music Video Effects Volume 1 tutorial. I've received a lot of comments and questions from a few of you, and I believe that it's time to do another one, so the next tutorial will be Music Video Effects Volume 2. Until then, stay creative.